Hi there, sir. Could you tell us your plea today? I don't have any comment to make at this time. And would you like to tell us your plea? I don't have any comment to make right now. How has life on bail been for you? Have you had access to computers or, or phones? I'm not making any comment at this time. Have you had any uh, contact with uh, Premier Kathleen Wynne or any of your former colleagues? Well, I'm not making any comments. A former education advisor to Kathleen Wynne pleaded not guilty to seven child pornography charges today in a Toronto court. Ben Levin, also a former University of Toronto professor, was arrested in July of 2013 and charged with child exploitation as well as charges of processing and accessing child pornography. Faith Goldie was in the court today. She's here with me now. Before we get into specifically what happened today, tell me a little bit about the history of this case. Sure. Well, Marissa, you outlined the fact that Mr. Benjamin Levin is a big wig when it comes to the Ontario Liberal Party. Uh, this guy was Deputy Education Minister under Kathleen Wynne when she was heading up that ministry under Dalton McGuinty's premiership between 2004 to 2009. He's also a tenured professor at OISE. This is the Mordar that teaches our teachers. Also, part of Kathleen Wynne's tight-knit transition team that helped her transition into the Premier's role uh, mm -hmm. when she was uh, elected from within her own party. Seven charges, all relating to child pornography and child exploitation, including making, mm -hmm. distributing pornography. Sun News Nation will know that we have followed this story. It's been about a year since we've had folks in court. Today was supposed to be a preliminary hearing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, specifically, let's talk about that. What happened in the courtroom today? Right, well, it was a bit of a hodgepodge and a bit of a mess, if you will. Uh, we went in there expecting for there to be a preliminary hearing. Perhaps we'd hear a plea. We did. We heard him plea not guilty to all seven char uh, charges. However, his representation, infamous in some cases, left wing, uh, uh, or in so far as the cases he chooses to defend, um, defense lawyer uh, Clayton Ruby, he said, forget the preliminary hearing. What we want right now is a trial, which some folks could say is really a tool used to hoodwink the crown. So they, you know, what are they going to do? All of a sudden, speed dial all of their witnesses. Um, there is a pub ban, I have to say, so I can't go into any sort of evidence that may or may not have been disclosed. But when it came to Mr. Levin himself, he was wearing a gray suit you saw there, his usual glasses, clean shaven. He was accompanied by a friend. Uh, his brothers, uh, very prominent brothers, uh, one of them used to be employed by the Globe and Mail, the other Canada's ambassador to Cuba, not present. And noticeably, his wife was not present either. And guess what, Marissa? Only media in the room, you're looking at it. Sun News, as well as one independent blogger from blogwrath.com. You know, this has a different angle, too, to it, insofar as, you know, he potentially presided over the sex ed curriculum that was canned in 2010 by the Ontario Liberals. And I believe, actually, just a few weeks ago, the Minister of Education announced uh, that there would be a new sex ed curriculum. What do we know about it? Right. We don't know anything when it comes to the new um, policy, but I just want to bring your attention to what you're seeing on your screen right now. This is a letter penned by Mr. Benjamin Levin while he was in the deputy uh, uh, education minister spot. And he says here, this province-wide strategy has been a priority for our minister of education, Kathleen Wynne, and me. This education uh, strategy that he's talking about, uh, Marissa, as you accurately pointed out, was canned by Dalton McGuinty because it raised so much havoc. Why? Because it aimed to do um, t teach very young p uh, children, ages four to six, about their genitalia. Uh, by the time you're eight years old, they teach you about various gender identities, much more than two or three. Uh, by grade six, it teaches you about anal intercourse, 101. Forgive me if you got kids at home right now. Um, and now you're 100% right. Liz Sandals, current uh, education minister, is saying, guess what? 2.0 sex ed curriculum is coming out and we're going to introduce it in 2015. And that's why we've seen a response from uh, the provincial PCs. And they're saying, well, what's inside this policy? Is it the same thing that your old boss can't? Because if it is, we want to know because our, our constituents, our, our, our friends and folks at home who are voting for us, they weren't happy with it then. They're not about to be happy with it now. Why haven't they come out and told us what's in it? Well, it raises eyebrows. I mean, shouldn't there be transparency? Um, uh, unlike what some people within uh, the city of Toronto would like to believe, you are not my child's co-parent. You are their teacher, and you are not allowed to teach my child something that I am uncomfortable with or that I don't want to teach them, that is incongruent with what I teach them at home. And I want to know what's happening within my classroom. That's exactly what uh, MPP Monty McNaughton, he is leading that onslaught right now against the, the Ontario Liberal Party to find out what is inside. And when you have someone who is at the helm of this sort of policy, who is now facing seven child pornography and child exploitation charges, 
I mean, heck, folks, if your arms aren't up in the air right now, I don't know what will get them there. Yeah, and we're, again, we're not talking about frivolous charges. I mean, he made child pornography. Allegedly. He dist allegedly distributing child pornography. Um, and so his role, of course, in this certainly would raise a lot of eyebrows. Okay, what's the next time he'll be in court? Okay, so uh, what we were thinking was going to happen was that this week we'd see, have actually three pretrial dates. Instead, tomorrow, uh, Thursday, the court will be vacated. No one's going to be there. Then come um, Friday, what we're going to see is that the council will meet. So in other words, the Crown and his defense team, led by Clayton Ruby, they're all going to be before the judge. Next steps, we're going to trial. We're skipping pretrial all together. Mm -hmm. So uh, he was arraigned today, and we'll see what happens. Um, the judge that's presiding over the case right now, she's been known to be, uh, let's say, very reasonable when it comes to beyond a reasonable doubt, somewhat light on sentencing. Really? So it's no surprise. If I were in Clayton Ruby's position, I would have said, let's go to trial today, too. Clayton Ruby, a very famous lawyer that I'm sure a lot of our viewers are familiar with. Mm -hmm. All right, Faith, that's all the time we have. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Marissa. For more stories, check out Sun News Network Facebook page, facebook.com slash sunnewsnetwork.